Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Seasons 4, Episode 6. It's called The Good Samaritan, full spoilers for the episode as always. So this was uh, this was interesting. I, now, I've not seen the second Ghost Rider movie, because why would I? I've seen the first one and that was enough to know that I didn't need to see the second one. But I think it's kind of funny that if you wanted to, I'm pretty sure you could just assume they were in continuity if you if you really wanted to probably because obviously we, we get the flashbacks here we get a lot of the backstory between both not only uh robbie's transition to ghost rider but also his uncle and how that went down and we, we see you know the the gang like shoot at them and the car flips but look very good by the way him like flying through the air on slow motion uh yeah it did look really good yeah it looked really good and, you know, him like, oh, I begged that I, you know, I could get vengeance, uh, you know, get justice for, you know, whoever did this. And uh, he does technically die, but we see, like, a bike pull up. And I'm like, wait, is this... As the- soon as the bike pulls yeah. up, it's like, oh, man, this is cool. Is, is this, like, the old Ghost Rider? Is this what this is? Um, and they, they, they sort of, like, avoid showing you for a little while that I was like, oh, maybe, maybe they're going to leave it open to interpretation maybe not actually shows outright that it is the ghost rider but sure enough we get we get full on flaming skull um mm. so if you want to believe that's nicholas cage you could that or just the fact that you know we, we at least in this version of the mcu there is a yeah. previous ghost rider which yeah is yeah cool. yeah johnny blaze was around he he did yeah. exist in some capacity um I personally wouldn't believe it's Nicolas Cage. Not because I dislike Nicolas Cage, because those movies were... Well, the first one, anyway. I didn't see the second that one. That said, how amazing would it be to have Nicolas Cage show up in something like Punisher? <laughs> it would be good. They're shooting that right now. Maybe maybe he's on set. He's, uh... Yeah. That's, that's what happened. They just borrowed him for a day. That said, though, I'd much rather he show up on an episode of Arrow with the Bee Lady or uh, that Black Mirror with the bees... Something about bees. He has to be there for bees. If you've not seen the Wicker Man remake, you have no idea why I'm saying that. But just go go along with me. Uh, I really like this episode, actually. I thought this episode did a lot to bring the themes of the season together. Obviously, it gives a lot of backstory for the you know the main plot points, but I feel like it, uh, it brought to light a few reasons why the stories go well together, I thought. Obviously, um, they get uh, Gabe, uh, Robbie's brother, and but then the director shows up because obviously then the last episode he found out about this whole thing at the prison so he shows up hunting them he wants them on the plane and they hide in the containment cell that just sort of like the, the lore just underneath the plane is just, just sort of hanging just on. drops out yeah yeah which i feel like <laughs> i feel like i'd be shitting myself if i was standing in that thing well i think that's the point that's what uh sky expects gabe to be yeah. and she's like no don't worry it's got his own thrusters and he's like eh, it's cool yeah, but he wasn't standing in it. <laughs> that was a bad joke. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, dear. See, I, I, my father was in a wheelchair for most of my life, so I have an endless supply of uh, wheelchair-related jokes. It's just part of growing up in a house with someone who's in one. But, yeah, so I, th- I thought that was all good, and I thought that was a nice device for them, like, like hiding out and, like, hearing the story and, you know, Robbie finally coming clean. But when they finally come back up and the director, like, you know... He's smart enough to realise that the containment module's missing and he brings them up and he thinks, oh, I'm going to take him on because I'm an inhuman and I'm super strong. And the Ghost Rider starts... And this is after he breaks out of the cell, which yeah. has held literally everyone up to this point. Yeah, so so they really sell the Ghost Rider as being like this badass, like this, you know, mm. larger than life. Uh, and even the debate that Mac and Coulson are having about... Uh, or not Mac and Coulson, uh, Coulson and Fitz, where he's like, oh, he claims he made a deal with the devil. He's like... That's absurd. Well, you know, normally I would agree with you, but the Flaming Skull is, you know, a good argument. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But he, he starts beating up on the director, and we see Gabe's reaction, we see everyone's reaction. Everyone's kind of horrified that he can't stop, and it's eventually Gabe shouting at him. It's his voice that kind of snaps him out of it. It was kind of during this scene where I really kind of got why this goes really well with Sky's story. Because Sky's whole thing right now is that she can't forgive herself. And what the Ghost Rider is, what Robbie is, is he can't forgive at all. He is, you know, he his thirst for vengeance and not letting things go can't be satisfied. So I think it's 
I mean, I'm not saying that's his only purpose, but I feel like it's going to, it really helps Sky's story because ultimately she has to learn to let things go. And I think seeing what it drives him to, because he he can't, even if Robbie wants to, he can't let it go. The Ghost Rider is in him. You know, it's, it's just something that's out of his control. Yeah. So I think once Sky realizes that she can make that choice, that she can move on and let things go. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking we'll see it mid season still. Yeah, probably. I feel like it can't go to the, like towards the end of the season, or stretching it out too long, and with the breakneck pace that this has anyway, makes yeah, sense. It makes sense. Uh, so of course we have a new villain for the rest of this half of the season. Uh, mm. the true villain which is Robbie's uncle which I think uh, you, you could kind of see that coming I, I, I don't think that was super surprising yeah it's pretty there but it, it, it worked well enough and it should present uh, Robbie with a very interesting dilemma yeah it makes sense to give him some personal stakes in this yeah um, and of course it means that his uncle is more directly responsible for what happened to his brother and mm. that should be a conflicting thing where you know, maybe that'll be the big moment where he like takes him out. You know, mid season or whatever. Um, because I'm assuming we'll have a new bigger, badder villain for the second half of the season. Because that's typically yeah. how this he shows doesn't he doesn't feel big enough to last a season anyway. No, he doesn't. Um, that said, though, his power set seems cool. That he can just create things. He can create matter. Yeah, yeah, that is pretty cool. Hmm. I hope they use it in some pretty inventive ways. Yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, dialogue. I thought Fitz had a lot of great little uh, moments in this episode. Uh, mm. When they're searched, when they burst into his lab looking for Inhumans, is uh, yeah, make sure you check under the microscope and in the fridge because those Inhumans are tricky bastards. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, just just use your eyes, people. Yeah, well, it's good because he's frustrated because of Simmons because we see Simmons get sent off by the director with a black hood over her head so she can't see where she's going, mm. and we don't know where she is all episode. And it fits kind of represents that for us because he doesn't know who she is and it's making him agitated because the last time they spoke, they kind of. They had a bit of a fight because of the whole her having to lie for the lie detector test. Um, so his frustration coming out in a really fun way, him getting agitated and like you know, you know, swearing a bit more than normal. If you can call you know bastard and wanker swearing, but you know it's more than normal. He didn't normally rattle those off. So yeah, that's true. Uh, no, I really enjoyed this. Like you said, it made a lot of sense and it really helped give us something to connect to. Because obviously that's how we were feeling about Simmons. It just gives a really strong anchor point for the episode. Yeah, I think that's something that Fitz and Simmons have always done really well with the audience. Is if one of them's like either in danger or hurt or out of commission, we always connect with the other one about how mm. they feel about it because we genuinely care about both of them. So it, it, it works quite well. Yeah, and man, they really like just swapping between them at all times, don't they? <laughs> they really do. <laughs> I feel like, like maybe... Every every eight episodes, it's like okay, now they're on this one. They get like two episodes, so it's like okay, we're all right for a bit, and then it's eight episodes on the other one. Yeah, yeah. Oof, it's rough. Oh uh, dear. Um, but no, I, I thought this was a big. I, I thought this was a nice big climactic episode. Not, I mean, not like the end of the story, but a big sort of. It feels like it's the end of this six episode arc, and it leads into a new four episode arc where we've got this new villain because you know the the ghost lady's you know been dealt with. She's gone. Um, you know, so yeah, it feels like this was kind of pulling the team back together, and you know, this first six because they're pretty much in shape now. Like they're not hundred percent there, but they're almost there. Yeah, I mean, Sky still has to convince the director not to throw in a prison for well, yeah, quick. <laughs> but like they're they're all kind of on the same team again. Yeah, and now we have this arc coming up that'll be Robbie dealing with his uncle, and you know, coming to accept his his fate as Ghost Rider, presumably. Yeah, yeah, um, and I would suspect that the second half of the season might lean into more of the watchdog stuff with this whole. Yeah, it would make sense for it to come back around. Yeah, um, which would give Sky the personal because I can see Sky accepting to forgive herself and be a part of the team again mid-season, but mm. then the second half of the season is where she really gets to have her arc, where she it's her personal story. It's the one that she's most involved with. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, uh, no, I thought it was a solid episode. I mean, we went through that quite quickly, but I think it's because it's it's quite straightforward at its core. Yeah, but it was really tight. Like I, I wasn't feeling at any point like it was lacking. It was actually a very well constructed episode. Like them hiding in the containment cell as uh, Coulson and uh, director are having their debates uh, with Star Wars as a metaphor. Um, that was fun. Yeah, of course, you loved that. Yeah, Star Wars nerd. Um, 
But you know, like like them, them cutting between that and then everything going on with the uncle, I, I feel like it was a really tightly edited and well put together episode. Yeah, it was probably one of the best paced episodes as well. Yeah. Like, because yeah. it's not just that the season's been paced well. This episode was just at no point did I feel like, oh, maybe I should check the time. It was just like, oh, it's over. That was quick. Yeah, yeah, and uh, even something as simple as the moment where you know Robbie's uncle steps into the containment thingy and turns it mm-hmm. on and. We get that shock wave going out, even the way it cut between everyone. Because I've got a funny. I wonder if, because uh, obviously we don't see anyone who gets hit by that. Like we don't see Colson, we don't see Fitz after that, or Robbie for that matter. Like mm. I wonder if like there's any effects of that. Like does it do something bad to them? Does it knock them out? Does it give powers to someone? <laughs> I don't know. As much as I don't want anyone else to be put through torture, mm-hmm. I do hope it did, does something. Because it played like a big moment, and it felt like it's got to have some consequences to the rest of them, yeah. other than just giving the guy powers. Yeah, I, this is actually sounds like a really weird compliment, but I actually really like the location for this uh, final sort of showdown. Yeah. Um, even though it's just a big abandoned like like power plant kind of thing, which you see a lot in action movies and stuff like that, it's not an uncommon thing. You don't tend to see that much in TV though. No, and it felt really big. Like I really felt it, it didn't feel like they were hiding the size of it. Like, they really could had like, these big long hallways and stuff in these long piped areas and they could yeah big rooms even even just the outside shot you know with, with like yeah. may running in like you can see it on the edge it's just like oh this looks pretty big yeah i wonder, I wonder if they actually just like happened to find like a place that was like abandoned and like oh can we use this <laughs> and it feels like they might have done yeah because the, the, the one shot is when they first go in and they go like there's like an l-shaped hallway mm. and they get to the end and the camera sort of pans down the other side and you can clearly see it's like one long hallway another long hallway and it's just the team split up as well, and it looks really, you know, it feels quite big. And uh... even when you see him running away from the shockwave, I think it was a uh, Fitz, and you know he's running down the corridor, and it's like you can, it's quite a, uh, the camera's quite far back, you see quite a distance down. Yeah, good sense of space, I, th- I think, is what yeah. I'm really getting at. It, it felt, you know, it didn't feel like boxed into TV sets. Whereas I would argue that maybe the room with the actual equipment, where where the containment thing was that Robbie's uncle went into, I'd argue that that room felt like a TV set almost. Yeah, that's not a complaint. I mean, some rooms just look like that, but it, you know, it felt small. It felt whereas the rest of the thing, it felt like oh, we're out in location. We've found a good place, and we're you know. Mm. Um. So no. Uh. So that's a uh, shield episode six. Anything else before we? I mean, it was interesting to see them bother to tie Agent Carter in. Yeah, that's right. That was a uh, season two of Agent Carter. Uh, it, it took me a while when they when they mentioned Isodyne, I was like, where do I know that name from? And was... then they met and. Uh... I think it was when they said Roxon that I cut on. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah that was that. Because we gave up in season two of Agent Carter halfway through. Yeah. Uh, but from what I remember, yeah, this was somewhat linked in. Well, yeah, they, well, they, they had the report that was talking about Dark Matter or whatever it was, Zero, whatever it was called. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was what that was. Uh, and Matt cracks a joke about how, who names these things? Is there like a, a focus script for like evil villains? <laughs> mm. uh, no, uh, solid episode, so... Uh, yeah, let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. Thank you very much for watching. And we will see you next time, which is in two weeks, because S.H.I.E.L.D., along with a lot of other shows that are air on Tuesday night normally, are taking the week off next because the election's on. So, um, yeah, so we'll see you next time.